Okay, so maybe this is the beginning of actually the market having a, a bounce here. So, Follow up for the German S&P. Um, I've been trending down for two weeks on the spies. Uh, all of the pops have been pretty muted. We have done a good job of identifying potential spots where we could pop, and um, but we haven't really, you know, gone up much, like a dollar, dollar fifty each time here, here, here. Um, from overnight low to here is you know a little bit over a dollar fifty. So we can now judge whether or not there's a change there. Um, to me, the most obvious thing is if we start to hold above 275 and break to the upside, is a test between 276 and a half, 277. Um, the low from Thursday, excuse me, from Wednesday was 277. The high from Friday was 277. So um, yeah, that would be a buck and a half in the bottom, then another buck and a half bounce from, from basically here. Um, so that's that. A failure right on the open. Um, not just below 275, but let's say take out this 274 and a half as well. Then you can start thinking about for below here, start thinking about a test of the overnight low down here. And at which point uh, I would use that to sell some lower strike puts on the spies and buy some two 276, 277 calls, something like that. Um, so that's the downside play out. Um, if you really wanted to frustrate people who saw those over futures down last night, today you would, uh, you would not let that happen. You would actually maybe pop first, try to roll over, people get a little bit excited and then, then rip it. 277. So psychology is bad now. The news, negative news flow seems to accelerate. Trump wants to, there was a story that he wanted to tariff Australia. Um, so who knows? Maybe they just floated that. <laughs> Make them seem, uh, who knows? It's, it's a crazy time. Uh, also, Trump is in the UK, I think, for the next couple of days. So who knows what he might say for the media at that point. That could obviously move the market intraday. Um, at any point, he could say we're going to work something out with Mexico. That would immediately cause probably a $2 pop in the market, especially from lower prices. Um, if we've already run up a few dollars, maybe not so much, but certainly from down in this area. Um, IWM is actually above the low from Friday, about a half a point. I guess with this one, we're actually it's it's more so it's more oversold than the spy. So we're looking to see if we can actually just hold Friday's low, morning low here. Um, any type of flush through there and it gets back above, you want to buy that uh, and see what happens if it bounces back up to here. Ideally, if the market gets a bid and we we get a bigger bounce over the next few days, you'd be thinking about it moving back towards 149, 150. Um, Okay, so GNCA, which definitely, I didn't notice it was above E this morning, um, but it did go up another $4 in the last half hour. So they did a reverse stock split. It's, uh, it went from like 100 million shares to 12 million shares. It seems like they have real legitimate news. Um, They announced that they were going to announce their immunotherapy results, and that's why I think it went up on Friday. Um, but then it, they hammered it, actually. Um, and now it's following through with the actual results being released. And so kind of like 10 was kind of the first psychological level. Um, and then it's this gap down area. That's why I have 16 on the sheet from this, this big gap down. So it could be one of those days. Um, where you know 
it flushes. What's the difference between they move from eight and a half to whatever the high was so far and holds higher and then takes that out and goes to fifteen, sixteen dollars. Um, but it's done two million shares already, so it has the makings of this one being one of those the better lower floats to, to trade over the next few days. So you can see here was the failure on Friday at seven and a half, sold off to five and a half. Retail is all over this. They're, I quickly checked stock quotes a few minutes ago and they were just going, I mean, they were going nutso on it. Um, we'll see what happens if it sells in. I mean, ideally it would come back down into this nine area. But the size of this move, the size of this volume, we might be looking at a situation where it holds a little bit higher here. Now 10, which we had as our potential first resistance, maybe it pushes through. Doesn't have to go to 15, 16. We want to keep an eye and see what happens if it gets above the pre market high and if it fails. And maybe if it just comes the range for the day. Um, CNC. So, CNC deal with this was Humana is not going to make a bid for them. So, the merger should go through with them and WCG. Um, the I think technically they're the acquirer, the way the deal structure. Let's just take a look at it when the deal was announced. Prices. So yeah, it was this gap down here. Um, so we looked at it this day. It actually caught a bit strong bit at 50, bounced to 52, and it was pretty good. It filled the gap over the next few days, 55. And then since then, now it's gapping down to 53, which is this level right here. So it's where it failed a month ago, broke through, did a retest to 53. So 53 is important. Um, let's see, 53, see if this acts as support this morning. If not, then it's 50 from the day of the initial deal announcement. Right, 54 on the sheet. Yeah. Okay, so so this is basically the range we're looking at right here on this. I don't really have an uh, opinion either way. Um, so we'll just trade off the levels. Uh, FDX is in a really strong higher time frame downtrend. Um, it's it's basically at the December low now. China announced they're investigating them because Huawei, the company that the U.S. is sanctioned, said if anybody does business with them, they are in trouble with the U.S. Uh, some of their FedEx packages, the documents was were diverted instead of going to Asia, went to FedEx's headquarters in Tennessee. I think that's where it is. Um, they so China is investigating them. Um, it's, you know, it definitely could bounce off the December low. Um, If you look at the most recent downtrend, it's accelerating a little bit. It was just at 160 a couple of days ago. So it wouldn't surprise me if it popped a few dollars a year. But it could maintain a steeper downtrend. There's really nothing below 150. In you know, 2016, there was a little support in the mid-140s. But it's, uh, it's not good. It's definitely oversold short term. So here, I mean, here's what it looked like over here. It was like down consolidated and down. Um, this has been more steady. But any type of you know move below 150 shows weakness below 50 comes can't retake claim it. You're you're looking at a bunch more downside. Um, so that's on that. And then Boeing, just more bad news again. They are I guess since all their the 737s are grounded, they've been spending time reviewing them. They found that a percentage of them had some some parts that needed to be replaced. Um, there haven't been any incidents related to those parts being needed to be replaced, but it's bringing it back down to the last time we looked at it in the 337 area. Uh, we didn't get hit or we didn't buy it there, but that this was the spot we were looking at based on the higher time frame. This is some support. 
So it's right down there again. Uh, FedEx, I mean, excuse me, Boeing does tend to repeat itself in areas where it supports and bounces. So even though it's in a downtrend, um, it does usually bounce off the same price a few times before breaking through. Even here, it held a few times at whatever this was, 365, 366. It got below it, and then once it got back above, bounced. So we'll see if it holds here. Um, below 337, I think I put 334, 333. This was from this site. Is it going to make its way down to this? You're always risking one to two dollars when you're trading this, so just be prepared if you're buying it in the 30 piece old seat holding here. You're really probably not going to get out until below um, 336, so you got to play it for a move back up to at 345 on there, but if it quickly pops, you know, three, four dollars and you can get some cover your risk, um, then we'll kind of see. Um, so is CY worth trading? I don't think so. Is it is it trading above the takeover price? Is it still looking for another bid? GPS. So GPS broke the trend, right? All the apparel names that were gapping down, even the ones that we thought they were overdone, they kept on going to the downside. This one had a good bounce, and it was, it was pretty clean. Um, they flushed it on the open, it did, you know, the pre-market low, and got to 18. It was, you know, good short at 18. Came back down in the 50 cents, but eventually um, it had a clean break of 18. And then if it came along, I mean, you could argue that people probably shorted in 18.50 as well from the, from the after hours reaction, but it broke the pattern, we, you know, the flush, then the up move, hold, then the up move, hold higher. It's, we haven't seen that in any of the other names. It, let's see where it popped at it, 70 cents. It pulled back to this area here and held. So it's, it was bought all day. Question is, does that happen again? Like, does it hold this area right here and go up to 19 to 20? That's what that would look like. If right on the open, if the first move is down and it holds below 1850, then I mean, some of the bigger people have decided they're they're giving up today, and uh, they're doing something different than the institutions did on Friday. But the burden's really on the sellers, I think, on this one, since it so it was so much better than uh, all the other apparels after they reported. Um, Uber, Uber was actually pretty good, very good off of the levels that we were looking at on Friday. Um, it spiked to the after hours high and went all the way back down to this 39 and a half support. It bounced about it bounced dollar thirty. Came back to hit it again, then bounced 50 cents, um, and actually closed the dollar above support. So, I mean, basically, you should just be trading this range, you know, looking for failures in the 40, 80 to 41 area, um, looking for support at 39.50 in the 40 area. Um, below 39.50, way back when, I think we played it on off 39 on this day right here. Um, was it this day? No, it was before then, actually, I think. It was this day, I guess. Um, but it, it was really good off 39. So even if it cracks that support from the last few days, I'm curious to see if it it, it, it actually holds 39. Um, so it's making lower highs. Um, any type of close above 41.50, uh, I would be looking for it to work its way back up to the IPO high. Um, KHC, they cut their dividend Friday. Sometimes those sort of events are the kind of the capitulation lows. Um, Mark was really weak on Friday, so um, it, it didn't have a, that great of bounce, but it was bought. You know, it put in the low right in the open, it popped a half a point, they accumulated it for a while, tried to roll over, but they bought it again and they closed at the high. So when I mean, you're looking at, if we go back, you know, 31 down to 27, split the difference, you know, that's 29 right there. So that's that. Um, TLT, um, I think every, a lot of people know this is, extremely overbought, multi-standard deviations move. Um, a bunch of people were sending me different statistics and articles on this one. And so in those situations, I always get a little nervous that everyone's looking for the same trade. But at the same time, um, sometimes people can hone in and be right. And so and in this case, you don't know if this is going to be the beginning of a huge pull-in, but you, what you know is it's going to have some sort of blow off top and come in in $2, $3. 
And so if you can get in pretty close to when it shows the top, at a minimum, you can make money in that pull-in and then kind of see what happens. So, you know, it showed signs on Friday, but then it ran right back up. Let's just quickly look at it. It was this in the bond market. It was this wick right here. Like that was something. And it went down another 10, 15 cents and then went right back up to the highs. So it's basically what you're looking at is there's a bunch of different ways it can happen, but one way is it goes up on the open, you know, something like this, and it comes back down, and it just holds for a while. It doesn't really get back up from where it started, and then you just see a break again. And like that's, you know, that's your confirmation that you're looking. The other one is it just kind of doesn't really do much, just kind of moves sideways for a while, and just breaks to the downside, or moves sideways for a while, goes up a little bit, and then quickly fails and moves back in. Um, but you want to look for signs of it of this stalling out, and then you'll look for a kind of a move back down you know, to here. And we'll see if that's the beginning of something bigger. You can always sell some calls above this. You could sell the 133, 134 calls. Give yourself a little bit of room. He said it extends up a little bit more. So that is on the TLT side. Uh, Qualcomm. So Qualcomm, I'm not in the camp that this is going to actually have a bigger bounce than this. So I'm more of the mindset like, let's see if it actually kind of fails here. I mean, I'd be happy to try to treat it either way, but let's come back up to 68. If we go back to when, when the news first came out. It supported here at 68 on day one. It resisted at 68 on day two. It gapped up. They hit it quickly. They got below 68. So the 68 is kind of a big deal. Um, they didn't quite get to there on Friday. Let's see what happens this morning. I mean, it's great that you have the 68 is a big deal. You also have Friday's high, which is around 70 cents. So it moves up into this area here and and breaks below when you move inside of Friday's range again, that could be the beginning of a, a nice rollover. Back down to 66, 66 and a half. Um, if it actually very strongly drives through 68 on the open um, and doesn't pull back much, you know, below here, and then takes out the morning high, then, then maybe the, it is in for a bigger move. But this is a level, you want to be paying attention to it around the 68 area. Um, on LK, um, this is definitely one we were paying attention to, and I think guys built long positions into this sell-off. I'm not sure if people are still long in on the desk. Um, I know we were definitely long a lot down here. And it looks really good. I guess it just was up too much on the IPO day. Um, I would say as long as it's above 20, you're like still focused on the uptrend, right? So, twenty four, fourteen. Yeah, I'm sure there's probably some Fibonacci level that it's coming into here, but it's it's in a good. Get a, a good uptrend. The one thing I'll say about it is, if you look, if you draw it as an uptrend channel, it's uh, it's it's extended here, so yeah, from here to here. So maybe 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 it'll pull in from 22 back to like 21, 21 and a half. Start to move sideways. We'll kind of see. Yeah. Maybe it rides like the upper half of the uptrend channel. So definitely one worth keeping an eye on. Oh, FL. We should look at that as well. Um, so I think I have most of that below here. I'm still holding some, but so I actually think it's going to bounce two to four dollars. Um, so what I want to see is a change of this pattern here. So this is actually a pretty big move, 45, 39. I mean, it might be something like just comes up into the 40 area, makes a higher low, 
and then it's, it takes this out here, and you play it back up to like here. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, maybe you get the flush out on the open blow 39, retakes 39 and a quarter, and you play it from like, you know, against the low, something like that. Um, but you really want to see it make a bigger move, get up to like in the 40 area, make a bigger higher low, or, or take out this resistance from Friday, um, and then start to think about kind of this, this range from Wednesday, Thursday as the bounce area. But that's a good one as well. Um, as always, be patient and good luck.